Welcome. This is Seek Sustainable Japan. I'm JJ Walsh in Hiroshima. And today I have the pleasure of talking with Yost Kralt in Fukushima. Thanks so much for joining. Good morning. Thanks for having me. And you are there on location in a very exciting vehicle, which we will talk about right. a little bit later. That's mm -hmm. kind of a new development. <laughs> um, but before before we get into what you're doing with Food Camp, which is very exciting, uh, yeah. tell us a little bit about how a person from the Netherlands, how were you <laughs> interested in and how did you come to Japan in the first place? All right. Um, yeah, uh, I came, I, I started studying Japanese for myself when I was about 16 years old. A friend introduced me to anime as uh, a lot of my compatriots probably. Um, and um, I was more interested in the language uh, that's used in, Jap in, in the anime than the anime itself. I figured out pretty quickly. So I started studying for myself and I had a lot of fun with that. Um, so when I was looking for a major for college, I uh, thought, well, if there's uh, something that I'm studying for myself that I'm already having a lot of fun with, then I'm sure that's going to be uh, a good major. So that's what I decided to study. And then through like um, exchange programs in Kyoto and Osaka, and then an internship in Nagasaki. I ended up in uh, in Koryama in 2015. So you came to Koryama where you are now uh, as a CIR, was it? Through the JET program? Right, uh -huh. yeah, the JET program, yeah. And then you went on to work for the International Relations Office for the city, is that right? Or was that part yeah. of CIR? Yeah, that was part of the, so as a CIR, I was working for the uh, International Policy Division of Koryama City. Nice. And then I saw uh, on your timeline during that time, you you had met Asby Brown and uh, talked yeah. to, uh, on the SafeCast. So you had that experience about five years ago. That's how I met you. Uh, yeah. For people who don't know, I went up and uh, <laughs> with Asby as our guide and you as our translator, uh, we went around the Fukushima coastal area and really got a really great insight as to what's happening in the area right now. And that's actually something you're connecting with the food camps right. as well, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, we're, uh, we're trying to promote Fukushima's uh, amazing produce and fruit and vegetables and everything that Fukushima has got to offer. So of course we have to, with the name Fukushima, there's a, a stigma that you have to fight, but we believe that for people to actually come here and try it for themselves and see the place for themselves is the best way to actually get the message across. Yeah, wonderful. And so during that, was it six years working uh, with the city as international yeah. division? And I saw one, you were at an event trying to promote uh, Koryama and Fukushima to the, the visitors from the Netherlands at one event. Um, so using your background coming from the yeah. Netherlands, have you been mm -hmm. able to get some Dutch people to the area? over the years <laughs> well of course like over the, the last couple of years with uh, with corona it's been uh, difficult but um before that we've had several delegations from uh, from the netherlands and uh several guests and of course there's uh, also the sister city there's a, a town in the netherlands that has a sister connection with the town of uh with the city of koryama which is also the reason why i was able to come here um so of course the mayor from the from the town visited and uh it's always nice to have Dutch people around. Nice, nice. Do you remember your Dutch? Are you forgetting it? I think that I can still can speak, but it comes now not so fluent out. Just saying, it's not even actually coming out that fluently. Okay, okay, yeah. To be honest, I, I'm, I'm usually only speaking Japanese on the day to day, and then sometimes some some English, and then only Dutch when I'm eating with like family or like talking to uh, family or friends online. That's it. Wow. Yeah. It's, but hopefully if you do need to, you can get right back on that horse. It comes back. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 It's just a matter of getting it back into active vocabulary. It should be all right. Now, now for people who aren't very familiar with Japan, uh, I've got mm -hmm. a map here. So uh, let's just have a look so you can see on the bottom left, yeah. there's Kyoto, Osaka, um, Kobe more to the left would be Hiroshima where I am. And then on the yeah. right, we see the Tokyo, Yokohama area. And then how long does it take for people in the Tokyo area to get where you are in Koryama, which you see up in Fukushima? Yeah, so Koryama is, uh, well, Fukushima is the, the, the southernmost 
prefecture of the Tohoku region. Um, so even though it's Tohoku, which has an image of being very far away from Tokyo, it's not actually that far. Uh, and, and Koryama has a uh, bullet train stop. So uh, that takes about 77 minutes from Tokyo. 77 minutes. So just over an hour. That's fabulous. Yeah. And yeah. this is more of a close-up view of the Koryama area. Unfortunately, when we went up for the Fukushima Hope Tour, we didn't have a chance to come and see Koryama. Uh, what's famous about your Koryama area? Can you just give us an overview? Uh, so Koryama is actually a rather young city for Japanese standards. Um, it was developed uh, thanks to like a, an irrigation canal that goes from Lake Inawashiro, which you see on the on the west side of of, Inawashiro, of uh, Koryama. Um, there's like a, a mountain range that lies between the city and the and the lake. And because there was like a Dutch uh, civil engineer who was able to like help construct a canal, um, that canal made uh, the, the 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 land arable, and that's why the the city develops into like a relatively large city in the late nineteenth century. Wow! So there is a Dutch connection. You're not the first yeah. Dutch person there. I'm not, and whenever I tell anyone here in the city that I'm. Dutch, then they're always going to say, oh, Van Dorn, which is the name of the civil engineer. They all know him because they all learn about him in, in uh, elementary school. Wow, how interesting. Um, so let's let's start talking about Maganote travel and your yeah. work with Food Camp. How, did, how When did this start? Was it last year? I uh, Yes, I joined the company in April last year. Uh, so I worked for the city for about six years. And during my work at the city, I actually had some interaction with Magonote Travel and with the, the members of the food camp team. Uh, and that's mostly because um, the, the story that I just told about that irrigation canal, um, I was asked by, the, do you know the program Cool Japan? Yes. Uh, they asked me if I wanted to introduce something about the city. And I thought that story would be really great. But if you're just going to show like a little flow of water, you know, that's not, that doesn't make for great TV. Um, so I figured the best thing would be to uh, to highlight the products that uh, are now being made and the, the agriculture that's being done thanks to that canal. And I had learned about food camp um, that um, when I uh, first saw food, uh, saw pictures and footage of food camp and how it's done and how they uh, have actually have people enjoy the products at the places where they're made, being made, I figured that would be the best way to highlight them. So I introduced Food Camp to uh, Cool Japan, and I got to be in in the in the shoot as well. And uh, yeah, that's kind of where the ball uh, started rolling, and where I got to get to know the team. And uh, I thought it would be a really great place to um, a great place to work and a great project to work on. Wow, awesome! Well, tell us a little bit about the philosophy of Food Camp, the farm to table, table to farm concept. Okay. Your, uh, let's see if I can show it here. All right, there we go. Yeah, so this is um, what a, a regular food camp will look like. So you can see that um, you already mentioned uh, farm to table, table to farm. So I think farm to table is is quite well known. So having uh, people enjoy the the products um, from a farm directly, so not through like other distribution channels. Um, so usually I, like at a restaurant. Uh, so but we decided to flip the table, if I, if you can enjoy, uh, allow the pun. Um, so add uh, to farm to table, we added table to farm. So uh, instead of only um, bringing products from farms directly to the consumer, we also wanted to bring tables directly to the places where these are made. So bringing the people to farms and uh, wine, uh, vineyards and sake breweries, etc other places where great products are being made uh, so that people can actually enjoy them right there. And just to point out, this is one of the older trucks. Uh, you're yeah. going to give us a tour around the new hydrogen fuel cell truck um, that right. you're actually doing this broadcast from in a few minutes after this, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So usually, yeah, on the, the, the food truck that you can see on the right, that's the uh, food truck that we've been using for several years now. Uh, it just runs on diesel and it's just a two ton truck, uh, but it's well equipped as a, as a restaurant kitchen. So whenever we bring our guests 
to location uh, and we set up the tables and we set up like a proper outdoor dining experience. Uh, we also, of course, want to be able to serve, serve warm food and like, uh, a proper dining experience, right? So we actually be, uh, are able to prepare all the courses, which is usually five or six courses uh, on location from the uh, for food truck. And then the stairs up to the food truck, is that for customers to go and get their food directly from the chef or is that for um, the, the food servers? That's uh, so we always serve it out whenever we have an actual uh, food camp because it's uh, a course meal. So we actually have people serving that. We, I say we have people serving that. We usually do that ourselves because we're a very small team and we do everything from like the planning until like the execution on the day itself. Um, but yeah, customers and the guests can also come up to the, the food truck and just have a conversation with the chef and just see how everything's being made. Always welcome to do that. That's great. Yeah, so like, uh, we always, uh, so we bring our guests uh, to location by bus. Uh, also because we used to be originally a, a taxi company. We also always include, um, taxi pickup service. Uh, from anywhere within Koryama City, uh, which includes like Koryama Station or like any hotel that our guests are staying at. Um, and then we bring them to location. And the first thing we always do is some kind of experience, right? Some kind of way to interact with the products we made there. So that can be like a harvesting workshop or a uh, strawberry picking or uh, just a tour around the farm or like uh, the sake brewery be any kind of thing and, and a, a way to get to know the producers. So the idea is to bring Fukushima chefs, uh, high quality chefs together with the local producers, the local farmers, with yeah. the customers and, and mostly your customer target is people in the Kodiyama area. Is that right? Uh, it's about 50-50. Okay. Um, we have a really nice mix of people from Fukushima prefecture, mostly then centered in Kodiyama city. Uh, because it's so easy because you can actually get picked up at your house uh, so it's very nice for people to uh, from Koryama to join um but then the other half is usually from outside fukushima prefecture mostly from the tokyo area and that makes it for a really nice mix because um the people from the tokyo area are very uh, keen to learn more about the area and to like know what's popular and uh, know what other places to go visit and then you've got guests from Fukushima Prefecture who are all like are just uh, very happy to share that kind of information and you know talk about the place that they're from. Nice. And I imagine having these kinds of events, which are really showing the appeal of local farms, local products, that also kind of interests new residents, don't you think? That's kind of an appeal to residents yeah. who might want to move to the area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a great way to get to know the area and get to uh, get to know other people, other people with often similar interests. So, for, yeah, if people are interested in uh, in maybe moving to Fukushima the Prefecture, this is definitely a, a great place to or a great event to visit. And so top left, uh, just for people who are listening, not watching. Yeah. Uh, top left is a cabbage farm, it looks like. Yep. And then yep. top right, what is that? Strawberry? Mm -hmm. That's strawberries, yeah. So the strawberry farm, uh, Ozawa Farms, that's a little down south from Koromo City in the city of Sukagawa. And their strawberries are actually amazing. It's it's definitely like um, for sure the best strawberries I've ever had. And that was um, your so event, food camp event last month, right? In May? It was, yeah. Yeah, this picture is from the, the, the one last year, but uh, we had the same... Um, the same lineup last uh, last month and that one's definitely the most popular and is always sold out within like usually a few days and this time uh, because we uh, we asked a lot of people who weren't always able to join because they weren't on time with like applying we decided to do a lottery so uh we were able to seat about 30 people and then uh bottom left is that a dairy Dairy farm. Dairy farm. Yeah, yeah. The uh, Sasaki Farms in um, in the city of Fukushima. Nice. And, and then the bottom, bottom right, is sake. Yes, that's uh, Toyokuni Shizo, so the Toyokuni uh, Sake Brewery, in the town of Furudono, and they're um, 
their most famous uh, brand of sake is called Ibuki, and it won, uh, it's won some like, like big international prizes last year. So it's Wonderful. very popular. Yeah. yeah. And when we did the Fukushima Hope tour, uh, we visited a test site where they test radiation levels. Is that also right. done in this area of Fukushima? Uh, I'm sure they're still testing sites, uh, but honestly, you don't really hear too much about it anymore when you're when you're living here. I'm sure there's still people who are concerned, but for I think for most people living here, it's not really that much of a concern anymore. Also, it's, yeah, because yeah. The, the the proper distribution channels, um, they're also all the products are also being tested. So, right, and like uh, was it Kobayashi San at the testing center? He was saying. Uh, you have so many years of testing with way below the safety limits that people just get used to that, that it's not changing. So people right. are, are less worried about testing. Is that right? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure there's still people who are worried about it. Um, but for the most people, um, yeah, they just go to the, the supermarket. They just buy the products and not too concerned about anything. I was impressed with that when we were uh, looking at products from Sh Fukushima, like rice, and you can have a QR code and you can test uh, the yeah. levels that are mostly all the big products are, are officially tested. Uh, mm -hmm. And you have very transparent access to that information if you are yeah. interested, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the, um, of course, there's hardly anything, uh, there's usually not anything tested that uh, exceeds the safety uh, uh, levels. Um, so it's absolutely perfectly safe, but it's still important to be able to keep that service out there because, you know, like people are, uh, can still be concerned. It's really important to be transparent about it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a, another slide? Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is what our usual dining experiences look like. So we always try to like, incorporate something about the environment um, on the table so the way that the, the tables are being set up so like always flowers or in the case of the, the the picture on the right that was at the sake brewery so we also invited the 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 rice farmer who provides the rice for the for that sake and we got some like the, the rice stocks to be to able to like uh, you know dress up the, the the dining tables nice and it looks like on the left are you at the craft brewery and sitting right next to all the hops growing on yes. the vine? That's awesome. Exactly. Yeah, that's the Hop Japan uh, brewery over in uh, Miyako, uh, Miyakoji, a little to the east side of, of, uh, of uh, Koryama. And I remember, uh, yeah, I remember showing the bottles uh, of Hop Japan to you in, the, in, in one of the shops. And remember that their slogan was, bring a little joy to your life. Yeah, perfect for me. I love craft right. beer especially with that slogan. <laughs> uh, but it's it's wonderful to see also that it's not just like camping tables. It's not, you know, like picnic blankets and plastic mm -hmm. cups and plates. No, this no, no, is no. like refined, fine dining. Everything is high quality reusables yeah. mostly, right? Is that exactly. one of the aims? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we don't want to um, just bring a whole lot of, you know, um, throw away stuff and um, produce a lot of trash. We uh, we always just serve it uh, out properly on, on, uh, on uh, porcelain plates and bring actual like, proper cutlery, uh, which is also, of course, for us, it's, it's a big hassle, but uh, for the guests, it's a lot better and it's a lot better for the environment. Yeah, you have so much less yeah. waste. Plus, just enhancing the experience for the guests for sure, is amazing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, we definitely want to produce a kind of like a, a proper restaurant dinner experience, but outside. Yeah, how fun. In unusual locations, yeah. Uh, you must be worried about the weather forecast though, right? Like everything's outside, so if it's bad <laughs> weather, what the heck do you do? Do you have tents or something? Yeah, we actually have a lot of um, gear from, uh, maybe you know, the, the outdoor uh, brand Snow Peak. Oh yes. Some uh, yeah. tarps and, uh, and other tents from um, from Snow Peak, and uh, so we're always able. If if it's if the weather's not too bad, we'll we'll be able to uh, do an outdoor dining experience. If it's definitely if it's raining too hard, like sometimes in the case of, for instance, um, the 
the, the, the one that we had in Iwaki last year in, uh, in November, it started to rain midway through and the weather forecast was going to be even, but it's going to rain. So um, we actually decided to set it up in a uh, greenhouse. So the, uh, the food camp that we had last year and the month before that actually as well, because you always have to take into account like rain, but also wind, because if it's too windy, you know, it's not fun to eat outside either. Uh, so you definitely have to be aware of the elements when you're planning this. Always have to have a backup. Any outdoor event planning is always like that, right? Yeah. Um, but sure. having the plan be like inside the greenhouse, is that what we're looking at in the top right photo? Is that inside the greenhouse? Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome. What yeah. a great idea. And maybe you remember this this gentleman here. Mm -hmm. He's an amazing uh, from, potter. Yeah. Yeah. From the um, uh, Tokichiro, uh, Tokichiro Gama, the pottery kiln that we visited during the Hope, uh, Hope Tourism uh, Tour, as well as the chef from the restaurant that we visited, Cross Wander Dining in Iwaki. And then the last picture that you showed, uh, yep. the chef on the top left, he had a microphone that mm -hmm. he was wearing is that because as he's cooking or preparing he's talking about uh the food a little bit yeah that one. Oh, actually that's before i joined the company maybe okay. actually not quite sure we have to think about it. i have to uh ask one of my colleagues who, who's been here longer yeah yeah no worries but it's a good yeah probably was uh talking about the way that i was preparing the dinner and like sharing that with the guests and That's then not if, we always do but yeah yeah and then if you have international guests uh would you step in and help with translation or support yes yes for sure um i can show you the, the website so our uh website all the new tours are all uh, available in english has uh, descriptions of all the activities and the, the products that are going to be highlighted. Um, and especially the, the one that's coming up this month here at uh, Bond and Co. Uh, in the city of uh, Aizawa Komatsu. This uh, tour will feature a couple of um, uh, Scottish and Japanese origin. So international couple. And what they do is they produce rice uh, through the Aigamo method and aigamo is like usually translated as like duck rice method i think um uh it's a way of uh producing um uh, rice organically by uh having the uh, having ducks live in their uh their rice paddies but then like feed off the insects and uh, the weeds and stuff and then get uh, so you don't have to use pesticides and also, of course, uh, because they're living organisms, uh, they provide natural uh, fertilizer. So you don't have to rely on that either. Uh, so it's going to be an organic uh, edition of the camp. Yeah, and connected to Lohas, and they have their duck sake, I saw on yeah. their website, right? Yeah, As yeah. The they organic also sake. duck sake with a feather. That was really nice. Exactly. Yeah, it's very, it's very, very cute. Yeah. Yeah, the loha uh, in Japanese is lohashu, so loha sake. So lohas for anybody who who doesn't know, I always have to uh, look it up. It's lifestyle of health and sustainability. That's what lohas yeah. means. Yeah, uh, and there's a uh, university in Koryama that's very invested in that concept, and they have actually joined the the farmers here and uh, uh, helped them out with their product uh, with their project. So. Oh, that's. Fantastic. Yeah, I would love to go for that one. I don't know if I can make it, but uh, because it's you. organic and everything. And then actually, um, they they also have duck meat as one of their products, right? Um, yeah, so yeah. at the end it's of the season. <laughs> yeah, that's the uh, the circle of life, I guess. Uh, <laughs> make full use of every, of every uh, of all their products. So, yeah. Yeah. And the, the duck meat, of course, the ducks are, are free range and organic fed um, yeah. on those insects from the farm. So, yeah, there's so many great connections there to sustainability on many different levels. Great. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure the, the, the ducks definitely have a lot better life than, you know, the, the ducks that are um, uh, that are usually in the, I don't know how you would say that, um, 
I guess the the the, the usual farms for duck meat. I guess most ducks are probably wild, uh, but yeah, there might be Good some stuff. cultivated. Yeah. Yeah. And then the the chef for this event, can you tell us yeah. about him? Yes, uh, that's actually a veteran chef for us. He's he's, uh, he's been for uh, been with with us for a number of tours before. He's uh, his name is Manabu Sato from the restaurant Teppanyaki Aizuya in the city of Aizu Wakamatsu. So we always try to select uh, chefs. We usually try to select chefs that are close to the producers uh, physically, um, and who already have or can establish some kind of like connection because for us the, the main goal is of course to provide a fun tour but as a great side effect we also want to stimulate um you know uh, local producers to be able to like supply their products to local restaurants and this is a great way to do it great that's yeah. awesome Gonna go back to you. Do you have more to show on the screen, or go back to talking to you? Um, yeah, maybe I can also show you. Um, so one of the reasons that uh, our company came uh, got into um, the food business was that there was a, a, a chef Masayuki Okuda, who is, uh, is a, fa a pretty famous chef who has a, a good restaurant in Yamagata called Arukechano. And he established a restaurant near Koryama City Hall to help with like the revitalization and basically what we're trying to do. So provide an opportunity for farmers and producers to, uh, you know, distribute their products. Um, he himself wasn't able to continue the restaurant, but our company stepped in and started um, operating this restaurant and called it Best Table. And our restaurant is uh, is focused on the concept of um, eat locally, eat seasonally. So we always have uh, local products from various farmers throughout the uh, the prefecture that we always uh, uh, show, and we change the menu uh, according to. Do you know the uh, Nijio Shiseki? It's uh, the, the, 24... the micro micro seasons. Is that right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I always love that when the sometimes in japan like uh people make a big deal of, of having four seasons but actually you have 24 that's I made mean, way more special um so yeah the 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 the, the years divided into two, 24 micro seasons and according to that calendar they change the menu every uh every, so basically every two weeks and, and uh, um, yeah. are you are you able to cater to vegan vegetarian diners as well if they come Absolutely. with a group yeah, for sure. Because the yeah, one of the big uh, specialties here is usually uh, some uh, vegetable dish. Also, the the salad, the, the the salad plate that we have for lunch here is. It, I wouldn't be exaggerating to say that that's one of the reasons why I wanted to join the company. It's delicious. Wow, fantastic! Yeah. There's never enough good salads around Japan, right. you know. Yeah. Like it's of course vegan vegetarians, they also want some kind of protein, plant based protein. Mm -hmm. But it's it's just nice. I think everybody who I meet who's visiting from abroad, they're often asking, "Where can I get a nice big salad?" Like mm -hmm. it's really sought after. And yeah, when you're featuring so local sure. veg, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and the chef from the restaurant often joins us for uh, for our food camp tours. Also, the some of the staff, with, uh, one of the members of staff, is uh, makes really great original cocktails and drinks. So she usually joins our food camp tours. Uh, and so we also want being, to, in, yeah, because you're being picked up and dropped off, you don't have to worry about drinking and driving, right? You can exactly. enjoy yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we uh, usually when when we go to like a uh, a vineyard or a sake brewery or some kind, we usually uh, provide a sort of like pairing option. So like uh, we'll have a, a set of different kind of wines or different kinds of uh, Japanese sake to match the the meal. So that's always a great option. Great. Uh, we've had a comment from Facebook. Kuldeep uh, says, "I feel like joining the company too, being from the hospitality industry. So, Ooh. are you guys are you guys hiring? <laughs> I'm sure, we can also we can always use more people. Fantastic. All right. Any other photos, or do we want the van tour? Sometimes. Oh, should we do this? 
maybe we can uh, yeah we can move on to the van tour okay okay um so the location that we're at now uh let me see if i just get rid of this there we go now um this might not be the most fancy thing to have as a background uh, that's just uh, to get rid of the backlight um but maybe we can give you a tour of the place that we're actually in let's see there we go You can see that we're actually inside our food truck. <laughs> it's my colleague, Murata-san. Um, yeah, so I can show you from the first, let's just show you a, a photo from the outside. All right, so this is our new addition to our arsenal. Can you still hear me? Hear me? Okay. Yes. Great. Yes. No problem. All right. So a few years ago, our company started working um, with uh, the the company Toyota, and the reason was that uh, in the city, in the town of Namie, close, near the coast, one of the towns that was evacuated after the disaster, um, as one way of revitalizing the area, they decided to um, invest heavily in hydrogen. So there is uh, a big factory that produces hydrogen. There's uh, uh, other uh, projects that are invested in uh, in hydrogen, such as like a hotel where you can stay at that's completely powered by hydrogen, um, and like in uh, research institutes. And we were able to provide a lunch at one of those uh, at that re uh, research institute. Um, so we kind of got a connection with them, and. When we heard that Toyota was looking for uh, projects to uh, expand their uh, hydrogen business and like do trials with, um, our company president was very very interested, and that's where the idea came from to uh, create a food truck that runs on hydrogen, and that's uh, where we are right now. Now, if mm. if someone was to buy one of these, uh, they're not really for sale right now, right? So this is just a special promotion collaboration with Toyota at the moment? It is. So we have a, uh, it is actually a Toyota High Ace, which is a van uh, that's been uh, modified into a, uh, into a food truck. Um, and it's still on a completely experimental basis. Um, so it's not available on the market yet. Uh, but it's so it's basically a feasibility study to see uh, how how it runs, uh, what kind of problems we run into, uh, how we can improve it, and then maybe in the in the future they'll be able to commercialize it. Now, anybody who is following uh, Toyota's uh, updates about the Olympics, they really wanted hydrogen vehicles to be all the buses and everything around Tokyo. Uh, so this yeah. this is part of kind of a big dream of Toyota for a long time, right? Yeah, exactly. There were a lot of um, uh, Toyota Mirai hydrogen cars uh, that were being used on the Olympics site. Uh, actually, uh, funny story because we are a taxi company as well. We actually purchased some of those and use that to like uh, run taxis throughout the city. So if you're in Koryama City, you you might have actually have the opportunity to ride in one. That's great. And then are there refill fueling stations around Koryama then? Yes, because Fukushima is relatively invested in hydrogen compared to many other regions in, in Japan. Um, there are actually several uh, refueling stations within Fukushima Prefecture. At the moment, there is, uh, there's just one in Koryama City. And then there's also in Iwaki and in Namie and um, uh, a few other places throughout the prefecture. Wow, that's impressive. I was really happy to see like EV charging and the shift towards renewables. We were talking about that uh, during the tour uh, when we were together up there. Um, and Fukushima is really leading the way for um, this kind of clean tech and renewable energy, right? It's very yeah, impressive. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Should we give you a full tour of the, yes, of the let's van? Yes, see it. Yeah, go ahead. All right, let's see if we can do this. All right, so you can see um, it's a full grade, like a restaurant, kitchen, uh, food truck. 
it's equipped uh, it's uh, equipped with a steam convection oven right here as well as um, IH cookers the cooking pads three of them and then it's got everything from like um, the refrigerators and it has a 80 uh, liter water tank can see here just uh, the, the sinks and it's right it's on right, right now right like it's so it quiet. is on it is uh yeah i can li literally say that our stream right now is being powered by hydrogen <laughs> that's awesome and i mean there's still uh, it's in the early stages so making hydrogen is still not as clean as it can be but the fact right. that you're in a vehicle which is not making noise not making mm -hmm. emissions that is such added value for your customers, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because um, if you're hosting an event, like an outdoor dining event, uh, but you're bringing a diesel, you know, noisy uh, uh, food truck into a very nice, like pristine, natural environment, that's, you know, that's kind of a waste. So to have this kind of car that, uh, that really is completely quiet, and also uh, doesn't exhaust anything outside of like water. Um, it really fit uh, matches our, you know, what we're trying to do. Also much nicer for locals and farmers in the area. Uh, they don't have sure, to listen yeah. to a diesel uh, engine the whole day, right? Exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can, yeah, from the little window here on the side door, you can, uh, the customers can, talk directly to the chef or uh, receive their uh, their food right directly from here. That's awesome. Yeah. Have you, so have has, you done uh, any cooking mm -hmm. on board? Um, I have not myself. I would love to try it, actually. Uh, I would love to make so, uh, something here. But um, so far, because we're still in the process of, of um, going through like the, the, the public health center and getting through all the checks and uh, making sure that we uh, can operate it safely. Um, right now, uh, the only time that we've really been able to serve uh, food from here was when we uh, announced it to the governor of Fukushima. And the chef from the restaurant Best Day was able to serve a booyah base of uh, fish from Ukido Harbor. So the harbor that you actually visited during the, the Hope Tourism Tour. Oh, wow. Yeah, how fun. Yeah. Yeah, so you can see that there's um, the the little machine in front of the car. Uh, that's a uh, sort of power con uh, power generator that uh, directly uses hydrogen from the engine. So the car is actually has three electric groups, uh, two 100 volt and one 200 volt to operate the kitchen. Um, now, because of safety standards and everything that you can fit inside the the, the car's interior. There were some restrictions, so we weren't able to uh, link everything directly to the back to the to the kitchen uh, side. Um, so, to uh, while driving the car, it actually can uh, use the refrigerator and the lights and everything, the air conditioning. Uh, but to actually or run the kitchen, we have to route uh, some cables through from like the front of the car from the uh, from the engine to the back. So that little box in the front, that's like a, a generator, like external uh, power yeah. source? Yeah, it's a power ex uh, exporter that you link up straight to the engine. And then uh, that reroutes the, uh, the energy to like the kitchen area. Wow, interesting. And how many you people can, the... can, you, can you serve? Like how, how many portions of food can you serve out of that van like can it serve uh, 40 50. uh it, it really depends on uh, how many courses and how many different kinds of uh methods of preparation we would have to do because there's some restrictions from the public health center our um our original uh food truck we can actually serve uh like large groups and we can serve complete like uh courses um but the um, uh, from this one because the, the the water tank is smaller, the other one has a two hundred liter water tank. This one eighty, so they assume like if you only have eighty liters, then there's, there's only uh, a number of um, um, 
of like pots and pans and stuff that you can use and you uh, you have to be able to like wash that all so they have like limits on how much you can prepare from uh from this car yeah uh, but for good. even for, for for big groups we can still cater just not as many uh courses but it's a it's a great option for when you're going out to the farm and you're doing an event on location instead of trying to build a temporary kitchen or cook from uh, like camping stoves. Uh, this is so much better, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's completely quiet. And uh, as I said, it only exhausts water. So it's uh, it's a great, uh, great option for uh, for it to be actually be on site. Fantastic. Yeah, we call have it the food a, camper. Have you yeah, that's an awesome name. I like it. <laughs> have you had a lot of interest from local people asking about it? Yeah, for sure. We have had a lot of companies who are interested in uh, in using it for their events and um, uh, yeah, for for future like catering jobs and uh, just to, uh, uh, to to show uh, the people like the the possibilities of hydrogen. So for educational events as well. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So have you done an event with the hydrogen truck yet? Uh, once we've cleared the uh, the public health center checks, uh, once that's uh, that's all over, we'll be able to uh, to use it for our food camp events. Nice. Yeah, yeah. it says it says all Denka, uh, all electric and yeah. uh, hydrogen. So you've got that combination, the all electric cookers and uh, the hydrogen mm -hmm. fuel cell powered, right? Yeah, it's it's completely electric. We don't have any uh, natural gas or uh, gasoline that's used here. No. Wow, what's it like to drive? It's uh, it's actually quite nice to drive. It's um, because it's modified. It's uh, it's relatively big. It also, the um, uh, you can see that um, the tires are very are quite far apart. And it's it's relatively low, so there are a lot of things that you have to be uh, careful of when driving it. But it drives really smoothly. It's like it's like driving a Prius. So you uh, uh, you have to be careful not to underestimate the size when you're driving it. And then uh, I drive an electric car, so uh, yeah. it has such great pickup, really good power and acceleration. But if yeah. you want the battery to last longer, you should drive like a more even pace but how how is the pickup like if you wanted to accelerate is it pretty good it's it's actually quite powerful yeah the the top speed wouldn't be too you know, too fast but also you want to be careful when you're driving this big, this big of a van right um so is so that fine, is that the but, same uh, with the hydrogen that if you are like a more uh you're driving slower or uh mm -hmm. slow acceleration then the hydrogen lasts longer then yeah. if you if you're driving fast it would use up faster yeah that would be the same for uh, as with an electric vehicle exactly right right but and the, if if you have much, like um, yeah just how much uh, hydrogen is being used and like while driving and while operating in the kitchen that's the kind of data that we're going to be uh providing for toyota just to see how, how economically it would drive. So basically, it's I an think experiment. She's she's getting tired of holding it. Do you want to switch back? Do you want to switch yeah. back to you? Sure. <laughs> that was sure. great to my, see from the outside. My colleague do all the work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we're happy to uh, be able to show it off today. Yeah, fantastic. There you go. There you go. There yeah. What's <laughs> Yeah. She, as you could tell, her arm was getting a little shaky, a little bit hard to hold for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's that's really exciting. I haven't heard of any other food trucks uh, which are electric powered or hydrogen powered in use. So I think this is very innovative. Nice we, to be a part yeah, of. Yeah. As as far as we know, it's it's a premiere. It's definitely premier in Japan. We haven't seen any like uh, like in use uh, examples outside of Japan either so far. So nice. And then uh, so this month you have the organic rice, the duck sake, and the organic farm uh, event on the twenty fourth. Is it? 
That's right. Yeah. And then in July, is it at a winery in July, the Koryama Wine Tourism event? Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, it's a um, wine uh, grape farmer from uh, in, uh, in Koryama City. Um, and then the event itself is going to be held at a vineyard or like a winery. Uh, it's actually only like down the road, like a few kilometers from here. Oh, nice. Ose Winery. Yeah. And then uh, for the the duck sake, duck rice and vegetable organic lojas <laughs> event, I love this picture from their website. And they look like such a fun and interesting couple. So they are, are they gonna a wonderful be, couple, yeah. Are they going to be talking at the event and giving some information sure. about their farm? Yeah, that's definitely that's something I actually skipped uh, in my explanation. Um, so what we always do is we try to uh, get the guests to interact with the, the producers as much as possible. So we always invite the, 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 the farmers and the producers uh, to join the guests at the table and to enjoy the same meal and they'll be able to like talk and share information. That's awesome. Because I, I think as consumers, you know, especially when uh, the farmers are doing something so unique and quite rare in Japan, all organic, using ducks instead of pesticides yeah. or fertilizers, right? I'm sure yeah. the guests are going to have a lot of interesting questions. Yeah, for sure. There's a lot of questions. And uh, also for the producers, it's it's a great way for them to um, actually see their uh, the consumers try out their food. Because usually, you know, they, they supply it to farmers markets or to uh, supermarkets and, and then that's it you know they don't see the end result um, but for them to actually see the their products being um, you know uh, uh, turn into like a really great meal that uh, the guests are then uh, really enjoying that's it's a great experience for them oh that's awesome and then the chefs who have a chance to not only use the amazing ingredients but also meet the local farmers then yeah. those chefs, I imagine, become uh, quite good fans of the local producers as well. And maybe yeah. they go on to continue using those ingredients, I'd imagine. Yeah, often after an addition of food camp, you'll see that the, the restaurant that the chef works at uh, will incorporate some of their uh, their products and like have it in their like steady lineup. That's awesome. And then, yeah. of course, they have that great experience, too being part of food camp and having that story to tell their customers when they go back right yeah and also it's, it's uh there's always a little bit of pressure for the for the chef i think because you know you're taking these products and you have to you know treat them well you have to make sure that you get the best out of them because there's the, you know the producers right there that's right a little bit yeah. of pressure Talk about pressure. What? Yeah. You overcooked my ingredient? What is exactly. wrong? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they never would. Yeah, they never yeah would. exactly. Now, another one you have, is this upcoming or past, the Aizu peanut story? Uh, this is going to be in um, October. Okay. So it's in the city of Kitakata. So Kitakata is usually very well known for uh, ramen, Kitakata ramen um but we wanted to highlight something else and we found out that there is a, a group of farmers um uh, that are assembled by a um uh, a company called okuya you got a lot of farmers who produce peanuts together and what used to happen with the peanuts from that area is that they would be shipped off to uh chiba where they would be processed and then in the shops you will find them like made in chiba even though the, the original projects are from fukushima so he thought that was really, like a really big waste uh, because there are so many great uh, peanuts being pre uh, uh, grown there. Uh, then he decided to get them all together and uh, just start a new brand. And that's the the, the place that we're going to be visiting. So we're going to be able to um, uh, harvest the peanuts and uh, take a look at the factory where they're being processed. And uh, you know, for uh, for a chef, of course, like to base a, a whole meal around peanuts, it's probably a, a um quite a challenge but uh we found a chef who's already connected with that uh with that company and uh, is familiar with the products and uh, was really interested in taking up that challenge well they have a very diverse range of products i was looking at yeah. their website it's not only peanut butter which i love i'm a huge fan of peanut butter but they also have really unique products like peanut miso 
I have exactly. never yeah, seen yeah. this before. This looks yeah. delicious. Peanut miso. They uh, they have great peanut uh, soft uh, soft serve ice cream in their shop. Uh, <laughs> peanut sauce, so, you know. So I think that the chef shouldn't have too much trouble. Um, but I yeah. I have had such delicious dishes made with peanuts over the years. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Um, is it Thailand or Indonesia? And they use a lot of peanuts like in the noodle dishes. So I'm sure mm -hmm. that's going to be a good one. That's in October, yeah. is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, if you take a look up, uh, at our website, so maganotetravel.co.ca uh, slash food camp, you'll be able to see all the tours that we have listed up for this year. Wonderful. And then uh, people, how, how can they sign up? They need to become members first. Is that right? Um, so they don't have to, but we, uh, we have a, a system where we, uh, have people become members. So if you go to the website on the right, there's a, a button that says become a member and you can sign up for the newsletter. Now the newsletter at this point is only in, in Japanese, but it features all the like links to all the upcoming tours. Um, and so if you become a member, you get like priority information and you can sign up early. Otherwise, like usually a few weeks before the tour, we also open it up completely to the public, so anyone can uh, can apply. Uh, we usually seat about thirty people per tour. Um, as you can see, our original um, our the tours that we organize ourselves completely uh, is about uh, once a month, and then we also have uh, tours that we organize on demand. So if we have like a demand from a company who wants us to do a, like a specific food camp for them or like a, a catering job, we also facilitate that. That's awesome. And it looks like yeah. you have a really cool one uh, coming up in Miyakoji in summer. Um, in Miyakoji, I think that was last year. Oh, oh that last, was last year? Um, that was actually two years ago. That was, um, that was before I joined the company. Uh, but this was, yeah, like a, a sort of monitoring, uh, monitor tour for foreign guests. Uh, and this was at the uh, Hop Japan Brewery in Miyakoji. Yeah, it as looks well great. As, yeah, as well as uh, visits to various other places throughout the prefecture. But then everyone ended up at this Hop, uh, Hop Japan uh, Brewery and they set up camp and uh, stayed overnight. And also there was music at the event. Yeah. Is this something you regularly do at the uh, food camp events? Yeah, uh, if you can let me go show it here. Um, oh yeah, there you go. You can see on the the picture on the right that I'm showing here. Oh yeah, you can see that on the the dining site at the dining tables we actually set up. Um, um, a piano with a, a professional pianist who provided background music during the uh, the dinner, as well as like the the this brewery actually has a um, a new uh, they've re renovated one of their storage houses and in, into this like really beautiful new building, and uh, we had like a little farmers market and a piano concert in that storage room afterwards. Wow, it looks amazing. So you can so enjoy can, yeah. the rural area, the beautiful uh, countryside views, but also see these great renovated old houses, uh, eat some amazing food by professional chefs, and Absolutely. be on yeah. location where the food is produced. I think it's a great yeah. concept. It's uh, as fresh as you can get it. Yeah, wonderful. How exciting for you to be a part of this. Are you... Are yeah. you looking forward to the next where, where do you think you'll be in the next couple of years with this project uh we hope that we have a a, a very steady uh group of guests and uh and more guests coming in we'll be able to do it more uh, more regularly so maybe because we're a small team we can only do our own tours once a month but maybe if we have a bigger team and we can expand a little bit we'll be able to organize it more often yeah awesome. and uh in the end I can show you that. Um, this is a, a, a map of all the places that we've hosted food camp so far. Wow. And you can see lot. that we yeah. we haven't covered the entire prefecture yet. There's still some places on the west near Hinoemata, near Tadami, as, as, uh, and uh, Nishi Aizu, and, and a few other places. And uh, still some ground to cover. So we've got our work cut out for us. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for joining. 
and uh, telling us all about the exciting new hydrogen food truck and all of the great concept of table to farm and mm -hmm. farm to table and professional chefs from Fukushima. I think we need more innovative projects like this in Fukushima, which really highlight uh, how the area is recovering and moving mm -hmm. on to bigger and better things, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. For, for people to be able to come here and, and just experience it directly is probably the best way for us to get the message out of how, what a wonderful place Fukushima is. Yeah. And the, the big million dollar question for you, mm -hmm. I, are you going to stay in Fukushima forever? Is this a, a permanent settlement for you? Well, probably. I'm guessing so. Yeah, that's uh, that's the, the most likely scenario. Wow. You don't you don't miss the Netherlands. Of, of course I do, and uh, I mean there's there's still an, uh, a possibility I might might end up there. Uh, never know, but, uh, but this seems pretty, the most uh, logical pretty, place for me to stay. Pretty yeah. happy to be settled in in this area of Fukushima. That's yeah, lovely. Yeah. Love love living here for sure. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all these great insights and good luck with the project. Yes, thanks so much for having me. Awesome. And thanks everyone for joining. And uh, we have another talk tomorrow. So see you again next time. Thanks, Yust. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.